Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanevyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Sri Shopanishad at the level of Bhakti Shastri. Is everyone can, is hearing okay? Sound is clear? Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll, we'll, let's recite the mantras first. This evening we're going to begin mantra 5 and if there's time we'll go into mantra 6. All right, so Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Isya vashyam idam sarvam yadkincha jagat yam jagat tena chaktena bunjitaha magridaha kashasiddhanam kurvane vaha karmani jajivi chakchatam samaha evam tvai nanyate tosti na karma lipyate nare Asurya namate loka antinam tamastar vritta tamste pritya bhigachanti ye chechat mahano janaha anijat ekam manaso javyo naina devam apnuvam purvamarshat tadjyavachyo nyanate tistat tasminapo matarishva tadati now, this evening we're going on to Mantra 5, right? Tade jati tat nai jati tat dure tat vantike tadantarasya sarvasya tadu sarvasya bhayata All right? Uh, mantra 5, translation. Translation, let's see, who has not read for us yet? Them, uh, who's this? Uh, Hari, Harini, is it? Sub Subamaya Harini, right? Yes, okay, would you read for us please, Madhiji? Translation? All right, so this is a interesting uh, way to present the Lord. It's almost, it's like something from Buddhism or impersonalism, the kind of language which is used in this verse. It doesn't seem to indicate a person, right? It's something, it's something, you know, just different from a person. It's almost like impersonalism. So please read the purport, Mariji, Harini.
Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, Srila Prabhupada is giving us the proper understanding of these statements when it says that the Lord uh, can do things which, and He can do one thing and at the same time He, he can do another. The contradictions, the contradictions, and we often see this also. We see this in, in the Bhagavatam also, sometimes when the different devotees are glorifying the Lord, they present prayers and they will describe how, for example, how the Lord is unborn but He takes birth, right? This is an apparent contradiction. Some say that he is unborn, but at the same time he takes birth. Now how is it possible he is unborn, but he takes birth? Well, this is his uh, contradictory nature. And Prabhupada explains the purpose of this contradic these contradictions. What is the purpose? Mariji, Harini Mariji, what is the purpose of these contradictions? Right, that the Lord has inconceivable powers. This is a very important point in getting people to understand the personality of Godhead, that they have to accept that there is such a thing as inconceivable powers. And we see this with the Lord, with His different activities. Of course, even even sometimes great yogis can do inconceivable things, things which appear to be inconceivable to us. It may be done by some great yogi, they get some yoga power, but the Lord is the source of all the yoga power. He's not just a great yogi, he's Yogeshwara. He's the origin of all the yoga powers. So Prabhupada talks about how the impersonalists, they try to understand these things. Uh, they try to explain these, these uh, the, what, what did they say Prabhupada said, the impersonalists accept only the Lord's impersonal activities. What, what would be the Lord's impersonal activities? Anyone could give an example of the Lord's impersonal activities? Or maybe it's easier to start with what, what are his personal features? What's the personal features which the Mayavadis reject? What? What is that Bhagavan feature? Okay. Sorry, what? Yeah, uh, particular, what forms do they reject? What particular forms? Well, they also worship deity. They also have their forms. They have their forms in their temple. Mayavadis also keep the. They keep form. Sometimes they have Radha Krishna. Sometimes they have Krishna. You know. Huh? Like, like which which pastime? Which pastimes? You know, try to let everybody, when they speak, let them finish speaking. Don't interrupt a person while they're speaking. Uh, so, Mataji, what you're saying that his, his what, what are you saying? Okay. 
Right. Yeah. This kind of leelas, the the the, the Mayavadis, they will give some kind of interpretation to this. They won't accept it as an actual fact. They will just try to make it some kind of mythology, and they, and they will give it some meaning, and and say that it's not it didn't actually happen like that, but it's just a story, and it's just told like that to present a message. But we understand that, you know, Krishna was actually a person and he did perform many activities. And just like Prabhupada talks about the Bhagavad Gita, how people give their meaning, Mayavadis, they give an interpretation to the Bhagavad to, to the uh, Kurukshetra and the battle of Kurukshetra and the Pandavas, you know, they, they try to give everything a meaning. They say, uh, the Pandavas are the five senses and Kurukshetra is the body, something like this, you know, they, they give some interpretation, they interpret everything. But Prabhupada points out that Kurukshetra is an actual place and it is a holy place and 5,000 years ago a great battle took place there. And five Pandavas were people, they actually, they were persons who walked on the surface of the earth. But the Mayavadis, you know, they say, oh no, it, it's just all, it has some meaning, they try to give everything some interpretation. So th they talk about the impersonal activities. Can you think of some examples of the Lord's impersonal activities? Sorry? Yes, right. Yeah, like the sunlight. Yes. Krishna says, I am the light of the sun and the, and the moon also. So this is the impersonal activities of the Lord. Yeah. Like Krishna, Krishna is talking in Vibhuti Yoga in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So he mentions so many different ways in which he is present in the world and this is his impersonal activities. The sound and ether, the ability in man and all of these things. We can say this is all the Lord's energy but it's his impersonal activities. So Prabhupada points out that we are following the Bhagavata school so we accept that the Lord has both personal and impersonal aspects to his personality. So if, if he was only personal, then he would not be complete. And if he was only impersonal, then something would be lacking, it's not complete also. So we, we, want, we, we have to have the complete presentation of the Lord that he's everything, everything which exists comes from him. So we cannot deny that he's personal, we cannot deny that he's impersonal, he's everything. Everything is, is there in the form of his energy, his inconceivable potencies. And that's why he's the Supreme Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, who's Who's not read yet? Let's see. Uh, another Maharaji. Uh, Vindya. Vindya Mataji. Yeah, would you like to read for us, please?
Right. Do you remember what was said in the previous verse? How was it described in the previous verse? Do you remember? You can tell us? You don't remember, eh? <laughs> well, it said, he has control over those who supply the air, the wind and rain. He surpasses all in excellence, right? And he can overcome all others running. So this was his, this is his, some of his qualities indicating that he's a, he's a person. So uh, it, Prabhupada is de describing to us how the Lord is far away. Why is he far away? In which place is he far? Where is he? Yes, in the spiritual world, right? He's in the, in the spiritual world. Where in the spiritual world? Spiritual world, you have different places, right? You have Vaikuntha, and then there's what, one other supreme planet, what's it called? Yes, right, Goloka. So that's where, that's his home, he stays there, right? That's his abode. So the, it's very far away from here, right? But at the same time, at the same time he's very near. In what way is he near? In what, in what way is the Lord near? How is he near to us? Yes, right. He's in everyone's heart, so he's right with us. And and if he wants, he can also he can come within a second. He can come from the spiritual world faster than any airplane, faster than the wind, even faster than the mind. So this is his inconceivable power. So we're hearing about his wonderful qualities. We want to become fascinated by him and think how wonderful Krishna is, right? Just like in Vrindavan, when Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and held it up for a week to protect all the people of Vrindavan, all the people in Vrindavan, they were thinking, wow, well, how wonderful Krishna is. So wonderful. So we're hearing about Krishna. We should also think, oh, Krishna is so wonderful. In this way, our mind should become absorbed. And we think about Krishna. Okay, so we'll have somebody else read. Let's see who else is there to read. Uh, what about Shobha Lalita Bai? Madhiji, Shobha Lalita. Yes, you can read for us, please.
Oh, all right. So, Prabhupada referring us to Bhagavad Gita 9.11 about foolish people. Foolish people consider Krishna to be an ordinary person. So, what's the difference then between Krishna and ordinary people? Why is Krishna not an ordinary person? No marriage is supposed to answer. And, and what he, he it, Prabhupada said he's he's not a mortal being. In other words, he doesn't die. So what kind of body does he have? Right. What's it made of? Uh huh. And what's what is that spiritual energy? What's this nature? The nature of the spiritual energy? Yes, it's eternal. Anything else? It's eternal, it's also, it, it full of bliss and knowledge, right? Satchit Ananda, right? The, the spiritual bodies are all full of, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Satchit Ananda Vigraha, we say. So this is. Krishna, he comes into the world, but he doesn't come in a forearm form, he comes in a two-arm form. He comes looking like an ordinary person. So it's bewildering for people. People think he's an ordinary person because he has a form like ours. <laughs> At least people think Krishna has a form like ours, but actually it's us who have a form like Krishna, because Krishna is the original person and we have taken the form from him, right? Krishna has the, the origin, the, in his original form, in Goloka, he has a two-armed form playing the flute and we have a similar form. We are made in the same form as God. It's not that God took a form like us, but we took a form like Him. So Krishna doesn't die, but you know, foolish people, they think, oh, Krishna died. Maybe if you watch the movie on television, they may show Krishna's story and they may show Jara the hunter. And you know what they say happened, right? What do they say? What did Jara do? The hunter? He came with his arrow and he fired it. And where did he hit Krishna? On the foot, right? The arrow pierced Krishna's foot. <laughs> and they say because of that Krishna died, right? So it's very, very strange, you know, we don't hear people dying just because somebody hits them on the foot. Anyway, you know, this, what, what actually happened is Krishna did a trick. Krishna did a trick because Krishna wants to finish his pastimes in this world. So when Jara fired the arrow into his foot, Krishna arranged for another body to appear. Not Krishna, but a Maya Krishna, an illusory Krishna. Just like when Sita was kidnapped by Ravan, when, when Lord Ram killed Ravan, he brought Mother Sita back 
And then he built a fire, right? And he had Mother Sita enter into the fire. And what happened? The real Sita came out from the fire. The Maya Sita was burned in the fire and the actual Mother Sita was not touched by Ravan. She was protected. She came out from the fire. Because Mother Sita, she's very pure and very chaste. She could never be touched by a person like Ravan. And similarly, Lord Krishna has a form of bliss and knowledge and eternity. He's not going to be killed by an arrow at the foot. But if you go there in uh, Saurashtra, there's a place, is it uh, Prabhashetra or somewhere like that in Saurashtra along the coast? There's a place, and they have a place where Krishna's ashes are there. And they say that when Krishna, after he was killed by Jara, they cremated his body, and they put his ashes, and they have a, a, a tomb there. So this is foolish. Foolish people, they don't understand that Krishna has a transcendental form. But Krishna played the trick. He did this trick because... He wants the people who are atheistic, they are, they're satisfied. They think, oh, this is Krishna. Krishna's dead now. Krishna's dead. All right, we have to cremate him. And then they put the ashes there and like that. You know, so for the atheistic, for the people who have no faith, who have no, don't believe in Krishna, Krishna played a trick like that just to bewilder their minds. But actually, Krishna, the transcendental personality of Godhead, he could not be killed by an arrow. And he just disappeared from the world. And he left that illusion, that maya form of Krishna, to fool the innocent, the foolish people who don't know about his inconceivable power. Is it clear? Are there any questions about this from anyone? Because often people will ask you about this, that, you know, Krishna got killed, you know, didn't you know Krishna got killed, they were, and his ashes are buried there and everything. <laughs> if, if you read the commentary on this section in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a very wonderful commentary by one of the Acharyas, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, and he describes about a magician, how a magician came. He came, to, he came to the palace of a king and he did these amazing tricks. In front of the very eyes of the king, he seemed to make people die. And he also died himself in front of the king, it appeared that this person, the magician was burning his own body. And then a few days later, everybody came back. And the magician sent his daughter there. And the daughter said, everyone is well and we're giving you back everything. And my father said, you should give some charity in appreciation for his magic tricks. <laughs> so there are magicians who can do these kind of tricks. They're magicians, you know, sometimes we see simple magicians, they saw people, cut the lady in half and like that. So Krishna, he's the Supreme Lord. He can do these wonderful tricks. He can trick people into thinking that he died. But the Lord, he's the Supreme Lord. He has an eternal spiritual body. He's not subject to death. Okay, no questions on this? We'll go ahead. Uh, let's have some men read. Uh, Ar, what is it? Ar, Anand Singh? Please read for us, Prabhu.
iconoclast. You, you know the me. You, you know what? You know what kind of person is an iconoclast? Some, some, someone who uh, he, he may go and break the deities. He doesn't have any faith. He hates deity worship, and he makes a point of going to temples and smashing all the deities. And he is very critical about people having any faith in any kind of worship where the deities are involved. Like that. You know, there are sometimes Christians, they talk about, oh, you shouldn't worship any graven image, this is condemned in the Bible. So, iconoclasts, like that. Some, you get these kind of people, crazy people, they go and break the deities. Okay, so, uh, so Prabhu, this maybe you can tell us about how the Lord is able to convert the this en from one energy to another, from the the material energy can make it spiritual, right? Are we able to convert material energy into spiritual energy? Well, what happens when we offer food to Krishna? So, we don't do it, but Krishna does it at our request. Right? We offer the food to Krishna and Krishna accepts the food and, and so he, he, he's a, he purifies the food, he makes it spiritual and we can take the, the remnant, it becomes spiritual because of contact by Krishna. And you know, devotees we do, we like to use things in the service of Krishna. So when we use something in the service of Krishna, does it re remain material? Mm. All right. So you can see actually devotees, we do have the ability to transform matter into spirit. If we use something in the service of Krishna, it be, it, it's spiritualized. Prabhupada often gave the example about the microphone. He said that this is spiritual because we're using it for Krishna. And just like tonight, we're using the, our technology, the, the Zoom technology in the service of Krishna. It's becoming spiritualized because of contact with Krishna, because it's in Krishna's service. If we use it in the service of the the, the industry, the business corporation, or the family, the society, that's not spiritual, that's material. But because we're using it for Krishna, then the spiritual energy is activated. Right? So, Prabhupada said about non-believers, what, what people who have no faith in, like the, in Krishna content, they can't understand this philosophy, so how do they think of Krishna? What's their view of Krishna? Right, they think. They think he, he's an ordinary, his body is made of the material energy, right? They think and some, some impersonalists, they will think he's come from the Brahman, that Krishna comes from the Brahman and that the Brahman is supreme. That's the impersonalist. But non-believers, uh, they think that Krishna is just simply, you know, a, f a person in history, just a, an, a, a historic personality. They cannot understand anything about his transcendental nature. 
this is, they say, this is not, this is all stories, you shouldn't believe that this is all mythology, it's not real. They talk like that. They cannot understand beyond the power of their intelligence to understand. So then Prabhupada talks about, he gives the example about the deity, how the deity is uh, made of material elements, but the deity is transformed into spir a spiritual form, non-different from Krishna. In fact, we say archa vigraha, that the Lord comes in the form of the deity. One of his incarnations in this world is in the form of the deity. So the deity is carved from material elements, earth, stone, wood, these things. And by the power of the devotees, because the, the, the devotees, they invite the Lord to enter into that form of the deity, right? When we do the deity installation, then at that time, the devotees, they request the Lord to come into the form of the deity. So the deity is non-different from the Lord. And this way the material energy becomes spiritualized due to the presence of Krishna by the inconceivable potency of the Lord. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, what about... Oh, Aravindaksha Krishna Prabhu? Oh, all right. So, more about the deity worship. Uh, of course, people who have no faith, they often attack this system of worship, how we worship the Lord in the deity form, and, and they talk about it as idol worship, you see. So Prabhupada said, one should not think that such devotees are worshipping an idol. No, we're, idol worship is not like deity worship. Idol, an idol worship, idol is just simply some material form. But the deity implies that the Lord has personally entered into the elements and the elements have become spiritualized. So the Lord is personally present there in the deity form. So this is, of course, this is inconceivable. But as we said, you have to understand there is such a thing as inconceivable energy. And if we accept the existence of God, we have to understand he has inconceivable energies. So he can appear in material forms to accept the Lord, the devotee's service. He, he comes in the form of the deity to accept our service. We see in Mayapur, devotees make very nice dresses, beautiful dresses for the deity, and they cook wonderful offerings all day. 
so many programs for the pleasure of the deity. So we, Prabhupada said, we're not worshipping idols, we're worshipping the Lord. Personally, he has agreed to appear in a manner which we can, so Krishna, the deity can eat, the deity can speak, the deity can walk, right? All of these pastimes are there. If you hear the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can read how Lord Chaitanya, when he was journeying to Jagannath Puri after he took sannyas, he went first of all to uh, the, the, they were at the Shira Kora Gopinath temple at Ramuna, and they heard about how the deity stole the sweet rice to give to his devotee, and then they went to Shakshi Gopal deity. The Shakshi Gopal deity, at that time it was in Katak, uh, and they heard about how Krishna became the witness, because the Shakshi Gopal deity was originally in Vrindavan, but then he walked all the way to South India for to be the witness. And then later on the deity was brought back there to Arissa. The king of Arissa defeated the neighboring king and he brought the deity of Chakshi Gopal back up to, Ar up to Arissa. So that de deity walked and he talked also. The, there's the, another devotee from the Ramanuja Sampradaya, he used to talk to the deity regularly, deity of Lord Varadraj, and he, the, the devotee was talking daily almost with the deity. And we, you know the story in Tirupati, uh, Hati Ram Swami, Hati Ram Swami was playing chess with Lord Balaji. Lord Venkateshwar would come and play chess with Hati Ram Swami. So the deity can do all of these things. But only, he only shows himself to his devotees. You have to be qualified. Devotees, they get special favor by the Lord. Okay? So, the deity is not just made according to the whims of the worshipper. No, the form of the deity is all described in the scriptures and there's a tradition and it's ancient culture. People who carve the deities, they do everything exactly. It's not whimsical at all. So, ordinary people, they don't know the, the great science and the art by which people uh, carve these deities, how they take so much care to carve and present the form of the Lord. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, Shiva Subramanya Prabhu? Is he here? Shiva? Yes? Yes, Bhagavad, in the Bhagavad Gita, please read. Yeah. So, you can see, pace to surrender. You want to see the Lord, <laughs> you have to surrender. So what is, what, how can we surrender? What does it mean? What do we have to do to surrender?
Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm a little worried when you talked about offering the results of work, because that's karma yoga. Right? Okay. Right. <laughs> yes, well, karma yoga ends in surrender. We give the offering the result. But if we begin with bhakti yoga, the surrender comes in the beginning. We surrender first and then do the then do the work. Okay, so Prabhupada's making the point that it's Krishna reciprocates. As we surrender, Krishna will reciprocate. If we surrender fully, then what can we expect from Krishna? What, did, what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter, 66, uh, 65? He says, "What? So just surrender. I give up all forms of, give up all your, huh? What does he say? Give up all your material religion. Give up all your dharmas, and just surrender. I will free you from all." Sinful reactions, do not fear, right? So this, that, so that way protection is there. One who surrenders to Krishna, he can get full protection. Surrender means to accept everything favourable for Krishna and to reject everything which is not favourable. Remember, six items of surrender. Did you study that when you studied Bhagavad Gita? The six items of surrender? Eighteenth chapter. Six items of surrender in the purport of 1866. Okay. Anyway, we should accept everything favorable for devotional service and we should reject everything which is not favourable. So what is not favourable? What will we reject? What things do we have to give up? We have to give up intoxication, gambling, illicit sex, meat eating, these things. Yeah, well, anyway, that's, but that's what has to be given up, right, completely. We stay far away from it, completely no connection with it. And, that, and what has to be taken up, what do we have to accept? Hearing, chanting. Serving, offering prayers, these things. Then we have to know also, only Krishna can protect us. We have to understand that only Krishna is the protector. It's going to protect us, nobody else. We don't worry about anything else to protect us. We just depend on Krishna 
and only Krishna can maintain us. You know, people worship demigods, they worship Lakshmi, they worship you know, the, so many things for, for their maintenance. But devotee just depends on Krishna. Krishna is maintaining his devotees. Then a devotee has no desire other than Krishna's desire. And the devotee is also humble because he understands he's insignificant. It's very small servant, tiny servant of Krishna. So that is surrender. And when we surrender like that, when we fully surrender, then Krishna shows himself to those souls. Krishna reveals himself as we surrender. Sometimes we, we doubt Krishna is there. But if we surrender fully, then we can, we'll actually know Krishna is really there. But if we don't surrender, Prabhupada said, he's far, far away. Well, he's, he won't come. Not interesting. So Krishna is personal. He's very personal. You know, just like, you know, somebody, you know, sometimes you can have a, you get along with somebody, you, you're happy to be with them and be near with them, but somebody else, they're very different, you can't get along with them, you don't, they don't like you, and they, you keep away from them, right? <laughs> so Krishna's like that also. Okay, so uh, we'll have somebody else sing, uh, somebody else read for us. Yes? Yes? Well, Prabhupada would simply talk about, he said that, where do you find all the paths lead to the same thing? There's no logic to support this anywhere. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, one who worships the devas, they'll go to the planets of the devas. If you worship the, uh, the forefathers, you go to their planet. If you worship the ghosts, you go to their planet, and if you worship Krishna, you go to him. So it's very clear that it's not all one, but they're claiming it's all one. But there's no, it's nowhere like that in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna saying, you worship, you get the result, you do that, you do this, you go there. It's not that all go to the same thing. You go to the, Prabhupada talks of, you go to the train station, you buy your ticket, you'll go to that place. It's not all the trains are all going to the same place. They're all going different places. So there's no logic at all to support this argument that everything leads to the same thing. It's just nonsense. This is the foolishness of their speculation that it's all one. So you can quote that verse from Bhagavad Gita, that the worshippers of the demigods go to the planets of the demigods, and worshippers of Krishna, they'll go to him. So it's not all one. How can it all be one? Very clear from Bhagavad Gita. Right? Sorry, what? The paths, the paths are different. Yeah, destinations are also different. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we'll go ahead. Uh, we have somebody to read. Let's see. Uh, Sumadur Yasham Prabhu? Oh, 
ثم الدوري يحول اوكي Okay, thank you, Manaji. So, Prabhupada is bringing up this point about saguna and nirguna. We should be a little familiar with these terms. They often come in Prabhupada's purports because we, uh, people will argue that Krishna is saguna with qualities. And so they think because Krishna has qualities, then he must also be in a material body and he must be subject to the laws of material nature. In other words, they think he gets old and he dies. They're thinking him to be an ordinary person because he has qualities. But Krishna's qualities Prabhupada points out, he said that Krishna may have qualities, but it doesn't mean that he has a material body. Krishna is the controller of all of these qualities. The material nature is under his control. He, he doesn't get old. He stays in the world more than a hundred years, but he doesn't age. He has a transcendental body not subject to any of the miseries of the material world. We don't hear about Krishna having toothache or headache or backache, any trouble. He's not worried about the, the coronavirus or anything. None of these things can affect him because his body is transcendental. So we have to understand the nature of the Lord that there's no difference between the material and the spiritual energies for him. So even when he enters into the material elements, they become, they become spiritual. He, he's, not, he's not under any effect of the laws of the material world as we are. We're subject to karma. Krishna is not subject to karma. He doesn't get any karma. He didn't take his birth by the law of karma. He, he's the law maker. He's above the laws. So material energy works under his direction. So then Prabhupada says like that, he said, in this sense he is without qualities because he's not influenced by any of these qualities. And at the same, but at the same time, he has a form. 
It's not that he has no form. So we're fighting against this because this idea of the of the of God being impersonal and nirguna and without form, without qualities. The, the, these ideas are spread everywhere and we have to explain to them the proper understanding. People read, they often read these kind of books like the Upanishads and they read them without the guidance of the Vaishnavas. Just like Bhagavad Gita, many people read Bhagavad Gita but if they don't read the Vaishnava purports then they get the wrong understanding of the Bhagavad Gita. The verse may be the same, just the translation of the Sanskrit could be the same, but the purport is very important. We have to have the purport from the Vaishnava, from the devotee, then we can understand. All right, we'll go ahead. Uh, someone else to read. What about Sudarshanka Fasudev? Is it? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We lost you. Okay. So I'll read. Thus the Lord is within everything and He creates everything by His different energies. Through His inconceivable powers, he can appear at any place in order to favour his sincere devotee. Lord Nisringadev appeared from within the pillar, not by the order of the atheistic king, but by the wish of his devotee Prahlad. An atheist cannot order the Lord to appear, but the Lord will appear anywhere and everywhere to show mercy to his devotee. Bhagavad Gita 4.8 similarly states that the Lord appears in order to vanquish non-believers and protect believers. Of course, the Lord, has, the Lord has sufficient energies and agents who can vanquish atheists, but it pleases him to personally favour a devotee. Therefore he descends as an incarnation. Actually he descends only to favour his devotees and not for any other purpose. So we're hearing the story of, of well, this pastime of Lord Nishingadeva appearing and Prabhupada's pointing out how the Lord appeared from the pillar. And he said he, the Lord can appear from anywhere anywhere and everywhere. Just like, where did Lord Varaha appear from? Anybody know? Where, where did Lord Varaha come from? Right, from the nostril of Brahma. Mm. So atheists, they cannot understand this, they cannot appreciate these things. 
the Prabhupada said, atheists cannot order the Lord to appear. Harani Kashipu, he was telling, where is this God? I, you know. But Har Lord Narsingadev appeared to please Prahlad, not, not just to kill Harani Kashipu. If he just wanted to kill Harani Kashipu, he could have done that, give him, give him a heart attack, right? The Lord is already there in the heart of the demons. And you can just simply give them the heart attack. But his real purpose in coming is to associate with his devotees. So Lord Nishringadev came to be with Prahlad Maharaj and to hear the wonderful prayers offered by Prahlad Maharaj. So this is the purpose of the Lord's appearance, that he likes to, he gets pleasure from being with his devotees. It's important for us to understand how, how important it is to cultivate our devotion and then we will feel Krishna's presence. You can feel Krishna with us, guiding us. If we cultivate that, if we consciously make an effort to remember Krishna. All right, let's see, somebody else here to read for us who's not read yet? Um, oh, oh. Sas, sas, Sasvat Chaitanya? Yes, Prabhu, can you read for us, please? Rama Samhita. Okay, so the Lord is there, witnessing everything. He enters the, he enters the universe by his plenary. How, what, who, how does he enter the universe? Well, yeah, that he enters the atoms of the universe as Paramatma. Initially, during the time of creation, he enters the universe as Garbhodakashaya Vishnu and, and then, then again, then Shiradakashaya Vishnu, Paramatma, and so within everything, within everything as Antaryami and outside of everything as a Virat in the form of the universe. And so he's every, in everything. And then Prabhupada goes on to speak about the results of our work, the karma fall. We don't remember past life, but Krishna remembers. He's got perfect memory, he can remember everything. We don't remember all the bad things we did, but he remembers. And we also get rewarded for the good things we did. So we make a point to stay away from sinful activities. We may think nobody's seeing us, but the government may not see, the, 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 the police department may not see, but the Lord witnesses everything because of His uh, omnipresence, because He's everywhere. He can see everything. So we have to be very conscious and act properly. All right? So one more paragraph. Would you like to read it for us, Prabhu, please? Go ahead.
And so there's nothing but God. You see that he, you can see it, it, this is uh, very pleasing to the impersonalists. Impersonalists, they'll enjoy very much this last paragraph here. That there's nothing but God within and without. It's all one. And Prabhupada even speaks about the oneness. In this way there is a oneness among his diverse energies. Everything is different at the different energies of God. But, he says at the same time, the Lord is there in his personal feature. And he enjoys all so many different ways. He's enjoying with his devotees. Okay. Any questions on this mantra? So no questions. We'll go ahead to mantra six because we're supposed to cover, according to the schedule, we're supposed to cover two verses tonight. A bit difficult. I never did it that way before. I usually take one night to one class for each mantra. Anyway, we'll try. Mantra 6. Please repeat. Yastu Sarvani Bhutani. Atmani Vanupashyati. Sarva Bhutishu Chatmanam. Tatuna Vijyagupsate I remember when I, when I first became a devotee, when I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement, every morning we would chant the whole, all the verses of the Ishopanishad. You know, just like often we chant Shikshastika, but we were chanting Ishopanishad. And, very nice. It doesn't take long. You can also do it. And if you do it every day, then you soon get familiar with it. It's very nice to recite scriptures. Okay, so mantra six. Uh, we'll have some, let's see, people to read for us. Tribanga Gopal Prabhu is here. Dandabhat Pranams Prabhu, please read for us eh? Okay, very nice. We're hearing about transcendental vision. We've been hearing about the Lord, now we're going to hear about the Lord's devotees. Okay, please purport, continue. Very good. Thank you, Prabhu. 
So, the, the mantra, initially, the mantra which we read, mantra number six, was describing the Mahabhagavat devotee, right? Prabhupada said, Mahabhagavat devotee, that he sees everything in relation to God. And he sees all life as being parts of God. And he, has, he doesn't hate anything or anyone. So this is a very advanced, that's a very advanced level, right, to be on that level. Prahlad Maharaj is a Mahabhagavat devotee. But then Prabhupada goes on to talk about how the Lord's presence is understood in different stages. And he talks first of all about the lowest stage, the Kanista Adhikari. Kanista, he's a devotee. He's also a religious person, he's pious. He goes to church or he goes to temple or mosque and he worships there. But he has very limited understanding. They think that God is only in the place of worship, that he's only in the temple or he's only in the church. They, they cannot understand that God is everywhere. And they certainly cannot understand that God is in the heart of everyone. They can understand uh, that they cannot understand God in his different features. And Prabhupada talks about how they follow different routine for, routine formulas. So they, they do it every ritualistic, in a ritualistic way. They follow the different programs, like in South India people come with the coconut, break the coconut at the temple, and do these kind of things, some tradition, they go to church, they put a few coins in the basket for the church, they give a little donation to the church, and they come to church on Sunday and pray. And the mosque, go to the mosque on Fridays, offer prayers. And sometimes they quarrel amongst themselves. We know about that. Well, that's because this is Kali Yuga. People quarrel with each other. And we think, my way of devotion is better than yours. We know in, in the history in South India, the Vaishnavas and the Shivites. The Shivites used to kill the Vaishnavas. Ramanujacharya suffered uh, his, his servant, uh, what was the name of his brother, uh, the one who was serving Ramanuja, his eyes were burned out by one of the Shivite kings. So these kind of dealings were going on in the history of the world, everywhere in India and then the great Christian crusades was also a war. All the wars practically took place is all to do with people having different devotion, different kinds of faith, and they fight with each other. And so this is Kanista Adhikari Mood. Prabhupada said materialistic devotees, they're still in the bodily concept of life. They haven't really come up to the spiritual platform. And they often criticize the devotees. Those who are on the transcendental platform, they're criticized by these materialistic people. All right, so that's the lower stage of devotion. They have weak faith and weak knowledge. We'll go ahead and we'll hear from uh, Gopi Jan. Is Gopi Jana Krishna here? Gopi Jana Krishna Prabhu here? Oh, Uttama Krishna. Uttama Krishna Prabhu? No? Yes? Please? Yes, you can read. Those who have a... T yeah?
Oh no. Okay, okay, stop there. Yeah? This, this is the, the... Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, it's true, Prabhu. This has been going on for many years. There's been a lot of changes, a lot of editing, so called editing done. There's nothing I can do about it, you know. Well, I, I, I don't know if there would be a big difference in the meaning, is there? Maybe some difference in the language, but I think the meaning will still be the same. Okay, Prabhu. Yeah, it, it, I mean, this this is an ongoing problem. There is a lot. Some people criticize. And anyway, Prabhupada wrote this Ishopanisha a very long time ago. And initially, it was published in Back to Godhead before Prabhupada went to America. So later on, he wrote, published it in the book. And over the years, they have made a lot of changes. All of Prabhupada's books have made changes over the years. And generally, the meanings are the same. Some places, the, the changes were necessary, and some places, the changes were not. Anyway, I'm not a member of the BBT, so I don't have a right to get involved in this. We're hearing about the Madhyamadikari, intermediate stage, and four sections of people. Now, ideally, as devotees, we all want to come to this platform of the Madhyam Adhikari. We want to see these different classes of people, right? We want to see the Supreme Lord, and we offer worship to the Lord, and we will see the devotees of the Lord, we make friends with them, and the innocent people, they have no knowledge, we'll give them mercy. But the atheists or the blasphemers who have no faith and who hate those in devotional service, we just ignore them, we avoid them, <laughs> just keep away. Why? Why do we just keep away from them? Why do we just ignore them? Anybody like to say? Any of you want to go and preach to the atheists? <laughs> uh huh. Yes. Yeah. It's very difficult to defeat people, you know, even though you may give very good arguments, they'll just keep arguing back, they don't want to accept, they, want to, they don't want to hear. And the result is, they will speak a lot of blasphemy, they will speak very nastily, they will criticize the process of devotional service, and they will criticize devotees, and they will say so many bad things, they will say offensive things, and if we hear it, if we listen to that, then we also become affected by it. We become implicated because we're we're it, because of our presence, they're inspired to speak nastily and to be offensive. So best thing is just to avoid them. 
don't get into arguments with them. Just stay away from them. Because they're just going to be offensive. And if they become offensive, then what? If people are offensive, we should cut out their tongue. But we can't do that. So what do we do? We just leave the place. Stay away from them. That's an important point, right? Sometimes we think we can imitate Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya, he could go and he could, you know, or Lord Nityananda, they could go to Jagai and Madai and convert them. But, you know, <laughs> very difficult. You have to be very, very powerful. So, we stay away from them. All right? So, have we got, have we got time? Not much time left. Just to come, no, we don't have more time. Uh, we'll go on from this on Wednesday night in the next class. We'll continue from here. The Madhyam Adhikari. We'll hear about, we've heard about the Kanista and the Madhyam. We'll hear about the Uttama, the topmost of Bodhi, which is what was being actually described in Mantra 6. So you can look over that, we'll go on to Mantra 6, we'll finish Mantra 6 and we'll try to begin also Mantra 7. Okay, are there any questions before we finish? Anybody? No? Or, yes Prabhu? Uh, oh yeah, I was supposed to ask about that, uh, yes, uh, it, I think it, well, well, at least one, at least one, no, they should, you should all write on the same one, but, uh, uh, just give me, just leave it for, with, for two more days and I'll, I'll tell you on Wednesday. I'll make a note that I have to ask on that. I'll just check with them and make sure because the uh, Padmanayan and people who are organizing, they may have some requirement what they want there. But anyway, uh, I'll definitely tell you on, we on Wednesday about that. Okay, thank you for asking about that. That's important, yeah. But everything else? Any any other question? Well, Prabhupada did teach us that Krishna is there in his picture and he even said the spiritual master is also there in his picture. He said like that, he said the spiritual master is there in the picture. So certainly Krishna is there in his picture, even though pr Prampratista is not done for the pictures, but still Krishna is there, so we certainly want to be conscious and uh, dealing with these things, it, it, it becomes a problem how to deal with them as the pictures get old, like publish calendars with pictures of Krishna 
so what to do with the calendars and things like this. So some people, they will like to bury it in the earth, some people will burn it, some people will put it in the sea, when you want to dispose of things. These different options are there. Some people don't like burning, so you, you can simply bury it, put it in the ground, paper, it will naturally go back to the earth. It came from the, came from the earth, it can go back to the earth. I don't know about burying, you've got a lot of desert there. <laughs> and you put stuff in the, in the desert there. But Krishna's there. It's, it's going to depend on the consciousness of every individual. Just like Prahlad Maharaj, because he's a Bhagavad devotee, Mahabhagavad devotee, he sees Krishna everywhere in everything. So certainly he's there in his picture. Right? When you see Krishna's picture, we, we offer our respect. We certainly will offer some kind of respect to Krishna in the form of his picture. And people do worship pictures. Krishna is in oils, he's there in the paint. So it's all personal, a, a, a question of personal consciousness, how we see the Lord. And we're hearing, Kanista Madhyam Uttama. So the Uttama, they see Krishna everywhere, in everything. So you can have, what level are you going to be on? Certainly we should be at least Madhyam. Worship, we offer worship to the Lord. So you have a picture of the Lord, deal with it carefully, take care of it. Is it okay? All right, we'll finish here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Shri